I'm getting ready to stitch out the lily blocks for the Designs by Juju Easter Blessings Runner. And I have my Embrilliance Embroidery software open. I really like this software. It's very inexpensive. It does everything that much more expensive software does. This is Embrilliance Essentials. I have a few extra icons right up here. This icon is for enthusiast and this icon is for stitch artist. I have stitch artist one, but otherwise the symbols and everything that are up here should look exactly like any other in Brilliance Essentials menu strip. So I clicked on the little yellow folder here for preferences. And I chose my format as PES because that's what my brother machine uses. You would choose whatever machine format your home embroidery machine takes. And then you'll get a list of hoops that are available for that machine. And if the hoop is not available to you, then you can click new and create your own. So it's really easy to use. I'm going to come down here to the preloaded 360 by 200 multi needle and click apply and click OK. So that's the size of the hoop. I'm going to make this on the Brother Entrepreneur Pro. It's the PR 1055 and that's my multi needle. And that makes this project really quick and easy. So I need to pull in the design for the lily block. I'm going to come down here to my folder on my bottom of the screen. And I'm just going to grab the five by seven block. I'm making the five by seven runner. You can go file open or you can click open and find it somewhere in your folder structure. But in Brilliance allows you to do what's called a drag and drop. So I have my folder open right here. I'm just going to grab it, drag it, and drop it. That's all I need to do. So I'm going to move this one way over here. That's the left. And now I'm going to do this one and I want to do the right. I want to do these at the exact same time. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to drop it in here. And I'm going to move this over. So I'm going to be able to stitch out both of these blocks at once because I can tell that they both fit in the hoop. But what I want to do is make them so that the colors are going to stitch on the left and then the right for each one so that the applique portion happens at the same time. So I want to stitch a placement line on the left and then a placement line on the right and then a tack down stitch on the left and a tack down stitch on the right. And I want to do that to minimize my time at the embroidery machine to free me up to go do something else. And how you do that is by color sorting. These designs, when I pull them into Embrilliance Essentials, the software assigned Brother Embroidery threads to it. That may be the way the digitizer did it. I'm not sure, but I prefer to use Isocord. I will also use Dimes Exquisite Thread, but the Exquisite Thread is not listed in the color choices. You can choose your preferred thread by clicking the thread button and you can tell it what you want it to be. You can hit the drop down arrow and there are a ton of different threads here, but Dimes Exquisite is not in the list yet. So I have a lot of Isocord poly, so that's what I'm going to use. And you can click set, use this as my preferred brand. I'm going to hit cancel. Once you've got that set as your preferred brand, once you bring in a design and say the digitizer used Brother Embroidery or maybe they used Floriani, you can just click Preferred and the software will match your preferred thread brand color to the color that was chosen by the digitizer. Click Preferred and here it is. It all switched to Isocord Poly and it got real close. Once I pulled the designs in, it's made up of two objects right now, two big objects. We have the left lily block and the right lily block. And I'm going to 
minimize this by clicking on this big box right here and I'm going to minimize this one. So you can see there's the left lily block and it highlights when I click it and here's the right lily block and it highlights when I click it. You don't have to have in Brilliance or any other embroidery software in order to stitch this out. But one of the beauties of using a software like this is to be able to look at the designs and see exactly what's going to happen and when, especially when you're using it on a multi-needle because you want to get in there and you want to see what's going to stitch in what order so you know when to program your stops in order to be able to put down your applique pieces, trim away if you're not using pre-cut shapes, etc. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to see there is the placement line for the batting, there is the tack down line for the batting, there is the tack down line for the fabric. So there's the base background fabric. Next we have placement line for the lilies. There is the tack down for the lilies. There are some little green motif stitches. There's your final satin stitch for the lilies. There's little stems in the middle, stamens, I don't know what they're called. More, this is another final satin stitch on this lily and it is done afterwards so that it covers the base of the little stamens in the lilies. There are the little yellow parts and more green motif stitches and the little red dots that are here. So if I were to go on down and open this up, this one's going to be identical. It's going to stitch in the exact same way. It's just that this one is flipped different from this one. Now that that is taken care of, I'll cut my scan and cut shapes in just a minute. But now what I want to do is called color sorting. And that's so that when right after this placement line for the batting stitches, then I want this placement line for the batting to stitch. Then I'm going to go stop the machine, go over to the machine, lay down a piece of batting to cover both, and then tell it to go again, and then it will stitch the next one. And how you do that is you have to give each one of these a different color. So if in this case, if you notice, so we have Tropicana right here, and we've got not quite red right here. I want this to be Tropicana as well. But look, we've got a Tropicana right here. That's not going to work. And the way you do this is you, you need to choose your own thread colors. And it doesn't matter what color it is because you're going to put your thread colors on the back of the machine. And then the machine doesn't care you're just going to go ahead and designate which needle thread color stitches at what time. You are in complete control of this. So if this is going to be 220 Tropicana, then I also want this one to be 220 Tropicana. And how I'm going to change that is I'm going to click on the chip and I'm going to come over to number and I'm just going to type 220. I think it's, it's 22, I'm sorry, it's 2220. Go, choose that, and click OK. All right, the next one. The tack down is a taupe, 1061 taupe for the batting tack down. And I want the batting tack down here to be 1061 taupe. Perfect. That's good. Here we have colonial blue for the fabric tack down 3902 colonial blue. I want the fabric tack down on this one to also be colonial blue and it is so I don't need to do anything with that. I'm going to come back up here. This says applique position but you can tell down here in the chip it's also the 2220 Tropicana. Well I use that in the batting placement. So this one, I don't want it to be 2220 or it will stitch right after the batting placement. And I don't want that. So I'm going to click on the color chip 
And I'm going to choose a different color. I'm going to choose just the next one down. That's not the actual thread color I'm going to use. That doesn't matter. I'm going to tell it 2170 chiffon and click OK. And now I want to go to the applique position for number two and click it and choose chiffon and tell it OK. Now, back up here. Now, here we are at 1061 taupe again. That's not what I want. So it looks like it's a green, and just so it looks good on the screen of the computer, I'm going to click this taupe. I'm going to search by color, and I'm going to put green and hit go, and it chooses a yellow green, and that's fine. That's 6043 yellow green. I'm going to tell it OK. Now let me come down to the next one here. I'm on two five. I'm number five of all these stitches, and I'm going to change this to green and choose the same 6043 yellow green. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm changing each color so that whatever color it is over here, it's the same color over here for that particular stitch. I'm going to continue to do that now. So here is a bright mint. I haven't used bright mint yet. So on one six is bright mint. Let me scroll down to two and that is also bright mint. Good. And then we have one seven is candle wick, which is fine. Let me go down to two seven. That is also candle wick. That's fine. All right. Now this one, bright mint, we use that up here. I don't want that. It's going to be a different color. I'm just going to click the chip and choose the next one down, which is celery. We've got celery right here. So let me choose the next one down, which is pear and tell it OK. So let me go down to 2-8 and change that one to pear. Click on the green. And I'm going to choose two down and tell it OK. And then here is that other candle wick. I want this to be a different color so it doesn't stitch at the same time as the other one. Let's, let's call it cloud and tell it OK. And come down to this one. Click. Call it cloud just so it's not yellow on the screen. They just need to be the same. That's all. We know the celery is the same for number 11. Celery, okay. And now we have, there's that Tropicana again. It can't be Tropicana. It is a green. Let me do that. Green and tell it go. And this time I'm going to use Lima Bean and tell it okay. And then let me go down here and change this one to Lima Bean. And tell it OK. Great. Now I want you to notice we have got a total of 12 color changes, color stops on number two, and 12 color stops on number one. Now what I want to do, I'm going to do Control A. I want to color sort. So Control A on my keyboard selects both designs. I'm going to come up to Utility, and I'm going to choose Color Sort. And then I'm going to go New View. Don't click Save It. You want to click New View. And that's going to give you a new tab. And that way your old original design is still intact if you need to go change anything and switch it out. So let me go to this. Now look, now we only have one object with two pieces in it. I'm going to click the plus sign. And I am down to just 12 color stops. So this is going to take a lot less time on my part and the machines to do this. So let's take a look and see what we've got. We have the placement line for the batting. We have the tack down line for the batting. We have the tack down line for the fabric. There's the placement line for our lily pieces. There's the tack down stitch for the lily pieces. There's your first green motif. There's your Final satin stitch for the leaves on the lily. There's your little stamens. There's your final satin stitch on that one. There's the yellow parts. There's the other green motif. And there are your little berries. You know what? These ought to be red. I want them to look red on the screen. So I'm going to click Lima Bean. And I'm going to type in red. 
just so it looks red and we'll choose not quite red and tell it okay. There we go. So that's what it's gonna look like on the screen now. I love this. I have a USB stick plugged into the uh, side of my laptop. So I'm gonna say file, save stitch file as, and I'm gonna come over here and go down to that USB drive. And I'm gonna call it Lily's and click save. All right, I'm ready to go over to the machine and stitch this out. But first I've gotta go over to the scan and cut and cut out my Lily's. I'm over here at the scan and cut and I want to cut out my Lily pieces. Now I'm gonna do two separate cuts because this white fabric, uh, you can see through it, and I don't want to see the batik, the blue batik fabric behind this white. I've got threads all over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a piece of uh, cutaway opaque stabilizer. So I'm going to cut a set of the flowers, the lilies, on this, and then I'm going to cut a set on the white. Now this has heat and bond on the back. I'm going to remove the paper and then cut that out. Then I'm going to go over to the ironing board. I'm going to iron my fabric to my cutaway. When it comes time to put the lily pieces in the hoop, I will use a little glue stick and then glue them down to that. Let me put my cutaway on here. I've got more than enough. I'm just going to Rub this on. This is the turquoise or the teal low tack mat. And I don't have any adhesive on this at all. I'm going to, I'm just going to load my mat now. Hit the load button. And let me get you up close to the screen so you can see. I'm going to go retrieve data from the cloud. And there are all of my lily pieces. So all I have to do now, I know it's going to fit because my stabilizer is covering the entire cutting area. So I'm just going to tell it, OK, please select and cut. And I'm going to let it cut out the lilies. Awesome. Let's see how we did. Already I can tell they look great. Yep. Perfect. My white fabric, what I did was I took a friction marker, a blue friction marker, and I drew a line all around the edges of the fabric because the, white, the fabric is white, the mat is white, and you're not going to be able to see the fabric. And I want to make sure that everything fits. And don't you know I ironed some thread into my heat and bond, of course. So I'm going to put this on the mat. In fact, I think I have it closer to something like this. And I'm on the low tack mat. Let me load the mat. Okay, now I want to go backwards one step and I want to scan the mat with that blue box with the, the bar across it so that I can see my fabric and make sure that my lilies are all going to fit. Okay, now I can see, because I drew that blue line, I can see that they're actually going to fit perfectly on that. That looks great. Everything should cut exactly where I want it to. I don't need to change this at all. That's wonderful. I'm going to tell it OK and select and cut and start. All right, let's see what we got. Perfect, perfect. Love it. All right, excellent. This is the cutaway for the left. So I'm going to take my left flowers and not stretch them. I'm just going to kind of scrape them off. My left. 
These are my right. And now I'm going to go iron the fabric to the cutaway stabilizer. And that's going to make them nice and opaque. I'm over here at the multi needle and I'm getting ready to stitch out those lily blocks. So let me tell you a little bit about what my setup is here. Again, this is the Brother Entrepreneur Pro 10. It's a 10 needle and it is the PR1055. I didn't say this in the brilliance part of the video, but if you have a single needle machine, you are absolutely gonna wanna learn how to color sort if you don't know how already. You're gonna save 12 thread changes and that's huge. But doing it like this with the multi needle, it makes it really simple the biggest difference between the multi needle and the single needle is with the multi needle, you have to front load everything ahead of time into the computer screen on the multi needle. And once you do that, then you're going to be able to just take care of whatever needs taken care of when it stops for applique, whether you're putting down your fabric or ironing it on and or trimming away if you have not pre-cut your pieces. And then once the applique parts are done, you're finished. The Brother will connect to the My Stitch Monitor app, so you can have it on your phone and go fix dinner if you have to, and then it's gonna go ahead and do its thing. This machine is not finicky at all. Once you set it, it runs. It is this close to being a commercial machine, and so it's designed not to have a lot of hands on. What I have done is I've taken all the thread colors that I want to use and I've already put them on the back of the machine. Again, like I said in the uh, in brilliance part when we were doing the color sorting, the machine does not care what thread color is on what spool. It doesn't know and it doesn't care. And it doesn't match, that thread color does not match what's on the pattern from the digitizer because my colors are different than what the Designs by Juju pattern suggests. And that's what that is, it's a suggestion. So because I'm using the fabric kit from Jelly Rolls to Go, my thread colors are gonna be different than what the Designs by Juju pattern says. So I just wanna get that out there. So on spool number one, I have a light lime green. Let me bring the camera up so you can see. On spool number one, I have a light lime green. On two, a soft yellow. Three, I have a turquoise. Four, I have a darker green. And the other spool I'm going to use is gonna be number nine. It's a little bit of an off-white. And that is gonna be for uh, that satin stitch around the lily leaves. I'm not gonna use the other threads on there. They're just there from previous projects. So the machine is already threaded and I have my largest hoop in here, the 360 by 200, and I wrote front on the front of my stabilizer so that when I pull the hoop out to iron or, or glue on my lily leaves, then I know to put this back in because that'll mess you up if you don't, because the, the hoop will go in either direction. I have almost a full bobbin, eh, about half. If it runs out, we'll deal with it then. <laughs> and I am ready to go. I have put in the drop of oil that it suggests. And now I need to program the machine. So let's get to that. I am going to pull it up from the USB stick. So I'm going to touch the universal symbol for USB. And Lily's, there it is right there. It says it's too large for the frame and I need to rotate it. Fine, rotate 90 and there it is. Now, I don't know which way's up and it doesn't matter. It really does not matter because these are identical and everything's gonna fit just fine. So I don't need to do anything else. I'm gonna tell it set. Okay, the, in this edit screen, you can resize, rotate, whatever you want. I don't need to do anything with that, so I'm gonna touch edit end. Now in this screen, we're still kind of in an editing mode 
but not design editing. You can rotate, you can use your snowman if you have something that needs to be centered, but we don't because the digitizer figured out where everything needs to go for us. But these three thread spools right here, I'm gonna touch them. This column are the thread color stops, thread stops, thread changes, however you wanna say it, okay? This column right here, one down one through five, up six through 10, corresponds to the one through 10 thread spools on the back of the machine. And right here is a little preview of what it is we're looking at. So we are on color stop number one out of 12. And don't pay attention to any of these color numbers over here. Does not matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> at all. So on this spool number, unless you set them, because this is the color numbers that we put in when we did the color sorting and if you if you were meticulous to that and you paid attention and those are the colors you want then that's easy i'm not doing that i'm not matching the color numbers so from this preview we can tell what we need to do and we already went through the pattern in, in brilliance so we've got a good idea of exactly what's going to stitch and when so this is the placement line for the batting i want that to be spool number three that blue thread and that's good. So on the next one, don't forget, I needed to stop after stitching the placement line for the batting. So this is a little bit backwards. You would think it would be stitch then stop, but that's not how the machine thinks. The machine thinks stop then stitch. So we're gonna touch the second one. I'm gonna put up my hand and tell it to stop and it puts a little hand on there and I want it to be thread spool number three for the same blue. Once this finishes, you're going to want to go to number three. I want it to be spool number three and that's fine. And number three is the tack down line for the fabric. I'm gonna put the hand up because I've gotta put my fabric down. Before you put your fabric down, if you're not using the trimmer by George, you're going to want to remove your hoop and trim the fabric around both of the tack down lines. I'm using the trimmer by George, so I don't need to do that, and I will leave mine in, but I'll mention that again when we get to that point. So three is the tack down line for the fabric. I'm gonna go to number four. That's the placement line for the lilies. I don't need it to stop before it does that. So I don't need to put a hand there. Number five is the tack down line for the lilies. And I do want it to stop. So I can put my lilies on with my little glue stick. Now, number four, I forgot to tell it what color thread. I want it to be spool number nine, which is that white that I'm using. And then I also want this to be spool number nine. And then spool number six is that uh, motif stitching. That's gonna be spool number three. Color stop six is spool number three. Color stop seven is the final satin stitching on most of the lily leaves. That's gonna be spool number nine. Color stop eight are the little stamens, and those are gonna be spool number four. Color stop nine is the final satin stitching in the lily leaves. Color stop 10 are the yellow parts, that's spool number two. 11 are the uh, other motif stitching, and that's spool number one. And then I had red because that's what the digitizer used, but the picture that I'm looking at from Jelly Rolls to Go uses the same yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and use spool number two on that one as well, so that it is yellow. All right, and this looks really good. I think we're ready to go. You always wanna go back through this one more time and make sure everything is right, that the spool numbers here in this edge correspond with the colors you've got on the back of the machine and you've got your stops in the right place. And this looks great, so I'm just gonna hit okay and embroidery. All right, and we are ready to go. I'm just gonna touch lock and go.
This is our placement line for the batting. And because we did a color sort, it's going to stitch them both at the same time. And it should stop before it goes to the next stitch. And it did. I'm going to remove this, put my batting pieces on. This is a great use of batting scraps. Go. Okay, if you don't have a trimmer by George, you're going to want to remove the hoop and cut away all of the excess batting around the outside stitches. I have that, so I don't need to do it, so I'm just going to put my fabric pieces over the placement lines here. Gosh, this is pretty. I have my fabric backed with SF-101 so that it's not going to get any kind of puckering or anything like that. That's a Pellon product and you, it, it's going to make your life much happier if you've got that on the back of any embroidery project that uses a heavy satin stitching like on the outline of these lily leaves. So I'm just going to hit lock and go and it's going to, whoop, I got it, yep, it's going to tack down the fabric. I didn't tell it to stop, so it should jump right to the placement line for the lilies. Y'all, this multi-needle is the bomb. I love it. <laughs> all right, I'm going to remove the hoop. I'm going to trim away all of these jump threads and use a little glue stick to adhere my lily flowers to the background pieces. Right, I'm all done. Even though I tacked them down with uh, my little glue stick, I just used a Elmer's glue stick, I'm still going to run the tack down line and if there's anything that's really sticking out far outside of the tack down line, then I'll want to do a little micro trimming and get that all trimmed up. But um, Which I'll do that all day long versus uh, trimming without using the cutting machine. So from here on out, I'm kind of hands-free on this thing now, and I'm just going to let it finish stitching. It has another 50 minutes. All right, we're all finished. Boy, this thing had its share of jump threads. My goodness. Turned out beautiful, though. All right, these turned out just beautiful. Get them out of the hoop and get them separated. I'm going to do a rough cut through the middle and off this side. I'm going to get my long strips here. I like to um, stitch these long strips together and make another big piece of stabilizer for use in other projects. Yep, yeah, that looks good. Okay. This is the 17 inch rotary mat and here's the trimmer by George. They are out of these right now and um, they're, they're getting a new, this is trimmer by George 2.0 they're getting Trimmer by George 3.0 in at HoopSisters.com. They don't have it yet, so I'm going to fold back the fabric and put the edge of the metal lip right up against that stitch line and fold it over. You need a 60 millimeter rotary cutter. The 45 won't work. The 45 is not tall enough to, to get to work. You have to use the big one. 
and just cut this and then you can flop that over and use the measurement markings on the ruler to cut that one half inch seam allowance just like that this thing is so awesome and it's so much easier than cutting in the hoop then trimming away all that batting in the hoop. This was a lot of fun and they're really easy to do once you color sort them. I'm going to do the dove blocks and the remaining blocks the exact same way and in the last video we will put everything together. Go sew something. Bye.